Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan. It's always a delight to be introduced after the word imperialistic. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. It's a great pleasure to uh, enable us to host the Western Humanities Alliance. I just want to say a few welcoming words. Uh, two things come to mind recently. The first is, as many of you know, uh, the New York Times has continuously lamented the decline of the humanities. And as an unreconstructed New Yorker, whenever I want truth, I go to the New York Times. And I notice that uh, a recent stories about declines in enrollment and concerns about the direction of the humanities, I think need to be recalibrated, as I know you will agree with me, not simply in terms of lamenting a past lost, but in terms of charting a future yet undiscovered. The issues of the digital humanities are not simply our ability to transform traditional analog materials into computerized storage form, but the real issues, it seems to me, are issues of cognition and control. At UCSD, as many of you may know, in many ways this campus has been a leader nationally and internationally in digital technology, in understanding the nature of brain and behavior, in understanding the relationship between the somatics of neural networks and the digitality of the computer. And it seems to me that no better place could be uh, a, a center for the study of the digital humanities and for our new humanities center than UCSD. And so as you spend time here, not only as you listen to each other's papers, I hope you'll get a chance to see what we've been doing here at Cal IT2, to see some of our exhibits, and to recognize that the campus as a whole strives to blend together the challenges of technology with the traditions of humanistic and liberal arts inquiry. The second thing that came to mind, in addition to reading the New York Times in the morning, was last night I was sitting around watching television in a moment of existential anxiety. And as I was channel surfing, I noticed a new ad. And the ad began with a picture of what appeared to be a pencil on a desk. And the narrator portentously said, this instrument can begin a novel or finish a symphony. This instrument can chart the world or record the mind. And it went on and on and on. And as the camera focused in on the pencil, the punchline, if you like, of the ad was that at the end, the pencil was hiding an exquisitely thin new iPad. And as the hand reached up behind the pencil and picked up the iPad, I thought to myself, boy, I can do all of that with a pencil. Why are you telling me to buy an iPad? And so I think the challenge of this ad in many ways is really the challenge of the discursive humanities at a historical cusp. Not simply an argument for new technologies, but whether these te technologies change cognitively and change substantively the way in which we articulate the liberal arts and the humanistic self. Will the novel written with a pencil be different from the novel written on an iPad? Will the symphony annotated with a pencil be different from the symphony annotated with technology? These, I think, are the real challenges. And my own teaching experience here at UCSD has been such that my understanding has been that for many of our undergraduates, the relationship between technology and literary texts in particular is very much content bound. I'm going to leave you with a little anecdote. And that was that I teach in the freshman humanity sequence here, and I was teaching St. Augustine's Confessions. And there's that great moment in the Confessions in Book 8 when St. Augustine throws himself underneath a fruit tree. And in anxiety and in confusion, he takes up a copy of St. Paul's epistles, a codex, a bound book. And he opens it at random, and he finds a passage. And he puts his finger in it, and he says, at this point, I could read no further. And I looked at my students, and I realized that none of them had had a copy of the book that all of them were reading Augustine on a laptop screen, on an iPad, on an iPhone, on some kind of electronic platform. And I recognized that their 
technological experience of texts was going to enable a very different physical and cognitive relationship to the experience of literature than the Codex. And I made clear to them that for St. Augustine writing at the end of the fourth century, the bound Codex was as new but also as culturally and ideologically freighted a piece of literate technology as the iPad or the iPhone is today. And at that moment, I think some of them actually got it. And I turned to one of the students and I said, have you ever opened a book at random? And he said, no. So I gave him a copy of my book and he stood up in front of the 220 students of the class and I said, I want you to open this book at random and read the first thing that your eyes light upon. And as sure as I am standing before you today, he opened that book and he read the following sentence. He was not a philosopher. And at that moment, I knew that for someone of my age, the teaching of the bound book needed to change. And that for the undergraduates of this generation, we're going to see not simply the survival of the liberal arts as we've experienced it, but a new transformation of digital humanities. And at that point, like Augustine, I need to read no further. And so I want to thank you all for coming today. I'd love to be able to sit through most of this, but as an academic dean, I have my own thrills and burdens today, not the least of which, as Stefan has made very clear in this wonderful new modes of scholarly communication, the question of how digital technologies have transformed many aspects of the publishing system and how we in arts and humanities need to understand the nature of intellectual and creative, creative productivity in a world in which the bound university press monograph may no longer be the sole and common currency of academic achievement. And so I leave you now to think about all of these things and I'll rely on Stefan and his staff to report back to me so that at the end of this event, I can become both a better reader and a better dean. Thank you all for coming today.